All right, let's do a video on centrifugal clutches. Uh, for this video, I'm going to use basically just a Honda 390, uh, just to show how this these clutches work. Okay, basically this here is a Noram Star clutch. This is what I've run on my big twin, and basically all it is is a drum, the needle bearing inside of it, and they also come with bushings, but the bushings have quite a bit of play, so I get the ones with the needle bearing in them. And they're nice because you can actually press them out and keep reusing the drum. It's a little thrust washer. Then here is your actual clutch itself. And this is one used for about a little over a season. You see how a lot of the shoe material is broken apart on it. And you got your three different springs on there. Now I'm going to explain on how one of these clutches would go together. Now this clutch here this is a Norm Star. It's got three springs in it. What happens is when the motor revs up and it's spinning, it throws these shoes out, which catch the drum, and then it spins the drum. So when this is on here, this spins the whole time. This will spin the whole time and keep spinning as long as the motor's running because it'll be locked in with a keyway like that. And it'll spin and spin and spin as long as the motor's running. Your drum. If I were to spin the motor, your drum will not spin. So if that's locked on there, I could take this drum and just keep spinning the drum, and the drum won't do nothing. So you could freewheel the motor. But until that RPM raises up, like the springs that I have in this clutch right now, these springs, these purple ones, are 3400 stall springs. So this won't move until I bring the engine RPM up engine RPM up to 3400 RPMs. At that point, the clutch will start moving and it'll lock in and engage. Now, some people make a mistake when they install these clutches. What you want to do when you install one of these clutches, the raised part goes towards the top of your motor. If you put this thing backwards, the clutch is not going to work right. You're going to rev it up to go move it and it's just going to rev up and not move. So the raised part goes towards the motor, towards the bottom of the motor, towards the side of the motor. After that, you want to install your washer. And if you forget how this goes, there's a machine surface on the bottom of this clutch, and that's where your washer would go. Just put your washer between there. I put a little bit of grease just there. You don't want so much that it slings out and it gets on your shoes and then your clutch slips. So you put your washer there, and then after that, just basically just install your drum over top of it and after that you're ready to go now you can retain these whether by putting a bolt into the crank with a washer to hold this down here or what I do is I'll use a collar lock and put a collar lock over the end of the shaft and that'll hold the clutch on itself because if not if you just have it set up like that or because some of the clutches have little allens the clutch will actually walk on you so when you'll be running it it'll be going sliding in and out, in and out, in and out on a horizontal or vertical, it may just come completely off and that's no good. And you do not want to run over a centrifugal clutch. They're big, heavy, and they'll do damage. But that right there is how those clutches work. And you can get different size springs. This whole clutch assembly right here is around $149, almost $150. Bucks. I get these from BMI carts. You can buy them off of eBay a little bit cheaper. You can find them different places. The springs are around three bucks each. The springs start, the stock springs, I believe, are 2250 stall. You could go 2250. The blue ones are 3100 springs. That's what I had in there last season. These purple ones are 3400s. And then above that, they go 36, 38, then they go up to 4000, some even 4700. But it all depends on where you want your stall to be. But yeah, that's just a quick little dirty video on these uh, centrifugal clutches. There's different styles of them. This one's a drum clutch. Now I'll show you a disc clutch I have. Okay, now this is a disc clutch. As you see, it's got a disc in between the clutch. Now this is a one disc clutch. These are pretty cheap. Uh, they're made for pretty much low power application, single cylinder engines. Now this clutch, I think I believe it's a Comet clutch for a little go-kart. I got my chain, runs to my hub, and that's my drive hub. See if I move the drive hub, it wants to move the mower, it pulls the chain. 
there's a collar lock holding the clutch on so it doesn't move now how this works is you've got your disc in the middle here between two frictions when this spins around it throws these fingers out it'll throw the fingers out when it throws these fingers out it puts pressure on this pressure plate which grabs this disc so when it throws the finger out it will lock this together and move as one and that's how it applies the power because normally just idling it's rotating like that spinning around you could see a little bit when I spin it around the fingers that are the fingers will throw out but it takes a quite a bit of force and RPM it'll throw these fingers out and then boom lock it out and then drive the whole hub together so you have a centrifugal star clutch which is a drum clutch and then you have your disc clutch some of the disc clutches can be a little finicky as far as weight sometimes you gotta add washers to uh, add weight to it because the farther the heavier it is to throw out the easier it would be to engage the lighter it is the more RPM you would need to engage this clutch but this clutch is a bit cheaper than the uh, shoe clutch but uh, this one's a bit more finicky but you could fine tune it a whole lot more but that's it as far as clutches go these are the only clutches that I have and that I run